Well, it is the first Friday of the month, and that means we get the jobs numbers for last month to ponder, to predict, and to dissect. Well, here they are. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the unemployment rate fell slightly to 8.1% in the month of April. That is the lowest since January of 2009, the month President Obama took office. Non-farm employers added 115,000 jobs to their payrolls last month. Still, that is well below the 170,000 jobs economists predicted would be added. And as far as that slowly declining unemployment rate, experts say uh, that was largely due to the uh, 342,000 people leaving the labor force altogether. And to speak more about this earlier, I talked to Max Kaiser, host of The Kaiser Report, featured right here on RT. The numbers tell an economy that is in grave jeopardy of collapsing. Uh, there are no new jobs being created of any significance. And more importantly, look at the wages. Wages are continuing to deteriorate, and the purchasing power of the average American is continuing to deteriorate. So this is an economy very, very troubled. Uh, although, uh, you know, of course, everyone is spinning this in several different directions. Some people say, you know what, uh, there's been uh, 26 or so straight months of growth, jobs in the private sector, and, and Americans, more importantly, are learning to, to live with less. Uh, what do you say to those people who, who sort of see the, the sunny side of all this? Well, the, um, the numbers are routinely massaged that come out of Washington. And what I look at are wages, and the wage number and the purchasing power is, is going down. Uh, the number of people, the absolute number of people who are not working keeps going higher. So they say it's at 8.1% is the unemployment number. That's not really significant because it doesn't relate to anything of, of, of meaning. It's a, it's a number that, that's cooked up to, 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 as propaganda. The, the actual numbers are a lot higher. They're getting worse. The wage number is horrible. Purchasing power is collapsing. So everything that we saw that started in 2008, all those themes of corrupt banks, of falling apart economy, and America losing competitiveness, all of this is just continuing but getting much worse. Yeah, certainly it's a different story for people who had a job, had a career making, you know, 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars, and now they might still be working full time, but they're making, you know, 10, 11, 12 dollars an hour. That's certainly uh, very different for them and affecting their ability to spend, as you say. I think it's also important to look at what's going on overseas. Uh, I want to put some video up of what we've been seeing in Greece. Uh, Greece is a place where there's more than 20 percent unemployment. Um, talk to me a little bit about your take on what's going on there and, and if you think it will come to that here. Well, I had a chance to talk to some people in the Occupy movement here in New York City, and I believe, as I explained to them, that the front line of this global insurrection against the corrupt banks is in Athens. It is in Greece. The Occupy protesters, there really should be several thousand of them in Athens joining the battle there. That's the front line. It's not necessarily Wall Street, although Wall Street is responsible for all of this, as well as the city of London. But the front line is in Greece, and Greece now is openly talking about T pulling out of the euro and of course that would have in incredible uh, consequences over the eurozone and around the, the global banking system because of course that would mean a default on major uh, bonds uh, that would ripple through uh, Germany and around the world and you'd see another Lehman-esque type moment and we're going to have one it, it's baked into the cake. The question is only when, because there has been absolutely nothing done to stop that from recurring, but much worse, because the policy from coming out of the Obama administration and coming out of, out of the European uh, countries has been to exacerbate all the problems, make them worse, increase the debt load, increase the instability, and, and don't prosecute for the accounting fraud and the banking crime. So, of course, we're heading into uh, a much worse collapse. It's, had, it's very near on the horizon now. These employment numbers are giving us a little view into what's to come. And the global insurrection, whether it's in Europe or in America, that people are in the streets. And when you say that people in America are now getting used to living with less, well, 
uh, that's not true at the top, is it? Because the people on Wall Street are getting used to living with more. So th th very... that disparity is causing conflict, uh, and that conflict can only be resolved either peacefully or violently. And to resolve it peacefully, you would need a leader. And America doesn't have a leader. They have a lobbyist in the White House named Barack Obama. He's a lobbyist for Wall Street. They don't have a leader who's there representing the people. Therefore, there is only one other alternative, and it's not the nonviolent alternative. Let me, let me ask you a question because I, I know you speak with, with countless people on your show, The Kaiser Report, um, people who I, you sometimes agree with, sometimes disagree with. In terms of laying out solutions other than um, violent uprisings in the street, I mean, who, ha, who has put something out there that you think is feasible to improving this economy? There is one very obvious solution. There is one very obvious solution, and that is to squeeze out the speculators from the system who have co-opted the system and you do that by raising interest rates or at least raise the margin rate which is the rate charged to speculators to borrow money we saw this in the 70s late 70s early 80s when the interest rates in america were uh, uh, risen quite dramatically and it set the stage for a robust growth the, the bull market of the 80s and 90s that's really the primary way to squeeze out the speculators, raise interest rates. It's something within the purview of the Fed right now. The Fed won't do it because they are in the pocket of the speculators who have convinced the Fed that they need to keep interest rates near zero, even though this is causing catastrophic effects to ripple through the economy and is uh, absolutely the worst thing that the Fed could be doing is keeping interest rates near zero. Peter, uh, or Max, rather, I want to um, repeat a slogan that I've heard uh, time and time again today, uh, and that is, where are the jobs? And uh, as you say, and I think it's really important to pay attention to wages, people are still uh, working in some cases in lower wage jobs, in retail, in, in fast food, uh, things like that. But what about uh, the good jobs? Where are they? Okay, uh, uh, here's, here's a way to increase. Uh, I'll tell you how to make uh, jobs appear uh, within one week. Break up the two big to fail banks. Uh, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, break them up into three or four banks. Now you've just increased the job uh, factor by a substantial amount. Break up the monopolies. Break up Coca Cola. It's a, it's a duopolist. Break it up into five or six new competitors. Break up the monopolies in America. You'll increase jobs exponentially. Get rid of the kleptocrats. Get rid of the monopolies. Who get, uh, I mean, Roosevelt how do you do, do that, that though? Because point? clearly, uh, you know, the CEOs of Coca Cola, uh, of Citibank, uh, of some of these large companies, uh, which most people in America probably do agree that these companies, these banks especially, are too big, uh, but it seems that the people running the, these corporations are all powerful and won't let anyone touch them. So, so how do you then deal with that? Right. You had the Robert Barron era in America, the Gilded Age. It was broken up by Teddy Roosevelt. You need a, the trust buster. You need a leader. You need somebody to come in there representing the people. It's not Barack Obama. We know that's not going to happen. It's not Rit Mitt Romney. Uh, somebody's got to come forth and be on the side of jobs and the people and wages, and they've got to start to bust up these trusts, these monopolies. And that you'll create jobs, you'll increase competition, and this is exactly what's needed. So we need a leader. There's somebody in America, there's got to be somebody in America who's got the uh, leadership qualities to step forward and to assume a leadership position and to help the United States. Uh, it's a sad day to think that about 330 million people in America, not a single person has the leadership qualities to lead this country. As of today, as of this moment, that answer is no. There's not a single person in America that can lead this country who's not co-opted, drug-addled, deep in debt, or uh, has some scandal overhanging them uh, from their sexual procadillos. Apparently it doesn't exist. I guess we'll all just have to keep looking for that economic superhero. I know you'll leave no stone unturned. Max Kaiser, host of The Kaiser Report, thanks so much for being on the show today.